<clears throat> hey now, Petey Grizz here. Welcome to the show. First up, I got a update on a knife I just showed off the other day in my Battle of the Swiss Champs. I uh, got this sweet uh, late 60s, early singer, si early singer, early 70s, Wenger champion. And uh, it was missing the lens for the magnifying glass. But I stole it from my uh, Evo 23. And I'm just going to send that one into Victorinox and let them put a knife, uh, new one in that. Rather than argue about me, argue with me over whether they want to fix this one or not. Even though it's the exact same thing. So that's pretty cool. But what this video is really about is a really cool knife right here. This is my first, couple of firsts for me. It's my first Rough Rider knife that I've purchased. It's also uh, the first of this type of knife that I've bought. So let's get into it. We've got the Rough Rider Zombie Nick series with the blood splattered box. Friends don't let friends eat friends. Hilarious. Got like a zombie robot going, looking thing going on here. Zombie Nick. Uh, I guess that's Zombie Nick. Uh, they did a whole series of this. And you'll see why. As soon as you hear zombie in Vars with a knife, you already know what it's going to look like. It's going to be bright green. Because for some reason, bright green means zombie. Uh, got the little zombie Nick badge there. The uh, workmanship on this is uh, is solid. It's uh, very smooth. You don't feel any uh, any rough edges or anything on the outside. Uh, we'll get into that in a second, though. So this is a uh, what's a pattern known as a sunfish, also known as the elephant toenail. Uh, particularly uh, when it's a, a old case knives or elephant toenail. It's also sometimes referred to as an English rope knife. This is a big, beefy boy with big blades. And uh, there's a reason for those big blades. First off, we've got the pen blade. Now that's a hell of a pen blade. And again, we get that friends don't let friends eat friends thing on here. I'm not crazy about like decorations like this. I don't mind an etch of like a brand or a logo on the thing but i really don't care for like decorated blades like this but i mean it's fine that would wear right off if i was actually going to use the thing got that black oxide coating to it even better this thing has has a cool feature you know watch this it stops right there because this pin uh just uh is not quite uh filed all the way even with the inside of the liner so it tends to catch on that pin while you're closing it not a big deal next up we've got the main attraction the big beefy main spear point blade 440 razor sharp steel uh, i'd say it's anything but razor sharp there's a good reason for that because this knife has a blade wrap the blade hits uh, the spring on the inside of the knife which confuses me because as you can see they ground down the tang, which means it probably didn't do that originally. They lowered the knife into there till it hit, which is just absolutely ridiculous. But, you know, that's the kind of quality control that, you know, you'd expect from a lesser brand like Case or Great Eastern Cutlery, but certainly not from a high-end knife like a Rough Rider. Um, anyway, I'll grind this down a little bit and take care of that. It actually hits right on where the spring turns up at the end here and a way to test for that is you should be able to push down on a blade just a little bit there should be a little clearance there this one does not move at all it's right against there and the blade suffers for it uh, i can actually feel you know where the the edge is kind of turned over there so i'll grind this down a little bit to give it clearance eventually when i feel like getting down to it but it just amazes me because they it, they obviously ground the tang down here for it to do that so it's like they wanted it to do that uh and i don't know what's up with the zombie knife thing i know they were big a few years back especially like when the walking dead were big and zombies were all the rage and every other movie was a zombie movie and uh you know for whatever reason all zombie knives are, are black with bright green handles so but it was inexpensive. I think it was like 18 bucks on Amazon. 
And uh, really the cool thing about Rough Rider knives is if you're not sure whether you like a pattern or not, this is a great knife to buy and check out and decide whether you like it enough to spend more on a, uh, you know, one of those lesser quality knives, like a case, you know, where they're known for those QC issues like that. I'm not, you know, normally from what I understand, you don't have to send Rough Riders back three or four times to get a good one. But uh, I'm not going to send this back. I really, for 18 bucks, I just don't care that much. Has brass liners. She's actually a beautiful little knife. I really like the green. I'm thinking I might take the blades down to uh, bare stainless steel and get rid of that decoration. Notice it's got match strike pulls on it. Pretty friggin' cool, man. This is a beefy knife. And there's a reason why these blades are so tall. And that's because this is also known as an English rope knife. And uh, these tall blades featured on these knives and also uh, rigging knives, sailors knives, uh, uh, yachtsman type knives, uh, navy knives. And the reason is, is so they're tall so that you can set it down on a rope and then bop it with a uh, belaying pin or whatever you have handy to quickly cut a rope especially if it's under tension and somebody's like caught in a rope. If uh, you're on a fishing boat and a net goes out and somehow catches a guy between the rope and the edge of the ship, you don't want to be sitting there sawing when seconds are, uh, their seconds might determine the difference between losing a leg and not losing a leg. You lay it down and you hit it with something heavy and bash that knife right through there. And since the ropes are up to uh, an inch in diameter, sometimes even thicker, uh, you need a thick enough knife that, you know, you can hit it and drive it all the way through the rope in one shot. So I imagine these were carried by sailors uh, around the turn of the 18th or the 19th to 20th century. And uh, Case started making them sometime in the early 1900s. They don't make them anymore, but I might look into getting a Case one now. I definitely like it. It's just a fun little knife. I mean, the spring pull is great. It's probably a six, but on a beefy blade, it's just so, it's so friggin' cool. Just, it fits in the hand nicely. It's not the most comfortable knife to hold, and I'm sure it's not the most comfortable knife to carry, but it's just something different, uh, and, you know, for 18 bucks, you can't beat it. So that is the Zombie Nick Elephant Toenail from Rough Rider Knives. Uh, anyway, that's the end of this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peter Greer is out.